Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Quantua's Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I would like to say a very warm welcome to you. It is another cook with me, and today we are making this delicious beef cabbage stew with amazingly delicious coconut yellow rice. This is so good. You don't even need a blender to make this. I know you will love this recipe. So I have these gorgeous all fresh ingredients here. And to start, I'm going to cut up my beef. All right, fam, I have to tell you, I already washed my beef before cutting it up. Feel free to do the opposite. I said, cut it up before you wash. Whichever way you think it's favorable or better for you, do it. I'm going to be cutting the beef itself into bite-sized cubes. So, you know, it's just gonna be all over every portion of the stew that you get, you have a piece of beef in there. And I said this in my previous video that I used this board on the countertop without putting a wet kitchen towel underneath or you know wet as you say or damp you, you wet it and then you rake it out and then you just put it on your countertop that prevents the board if especially if you are using a light board like this plastic one that i'm using it prevents it from moving around because as you saw i was chasing my board as i was cutting so my meat is all cut up i told you it's a pre-washed so i'm just going to put it right here in my saucepan and then we are going to season it So everything that I'm going to use today doesn't need blending. So I have here my garlic powder. I'm using about a teaspoon of that in here. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of all pepper seasoning. And this is cumin. I'm just adding about a half a teaspoon because this is strong. So if you don't like cumin, you can omit this completely. I'm going to add some onion powder as well that I'm going to add about a tablespoon you know onion is good so yes and then some in here <laughs> and obviously I can never cook fresh meat without adding some ginger in here today we are using powder of course so I'm going to add one teaspoon of ginger powder as well of course everything that we are using here you can use the fresh ones if you have them and those that you cannot readily find the fresh you could just use the powdered ones but today i just wanted to make a recipe that anybody can make even if you don't have a blender so i've added some salt and now we are going to introduce some fresh herb into this so i have some fresh oregano from my garden i'm also going to be adding some sage as well So there we go with the sage and I'm going to add some black pepper to it. This is going to be about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon if you want it to be that intense in your stew. I'm adding just a little bit of water just to help, you know, get the powders to moisten the powders, make everything mix well on the meat. And this I'm just going to cook like this with no extra water to it. So I'm just stirring, make sure everything is mixed up well in our meat and let it cover it so it cooks beautifully, smells amazing, of course, tastes divine. So onto the stove top it goes. Let it cook on medium heat. So I'm checking on it about 15 minutes into the cooking time. And look at that. It has rendered its own moisture so all the juices from the meat of course the meat has juice in it so it has all come out now and now that is going to help cook this meat so I'm just stirring just to make sure everything is well situated in here cover it again and allow this to cook some more because I want this beef to be soft so whilst that is cooking I'm here chopping up my garlic remember this is a no blender recipe so I'm chopping it I could have used my garlic mincer so if you have that you could mince it as well whatever fancies you just go ahead and use that so yes i did add some garlic powder to the beef and i'm adding all this to the stew so this is probably six cloves of garlic that i have here you don't necessarily need to have that much or this less if you're a garlic lover however much you need add it in here so I'm done with this and I'm going to chop my, up my onion. So I have on the uh, chopping board now some pieces of onion that were in my fridge. So I'm going to start with that. This is a half of a red onion. I have <laughs> this much also from previously. So this is probably like what an eighth of an onion. 
I'm just going to cut these up and that is going to be what I'll start this too with. So I have this large red onion here as well. I'm going to cut this up and this is what's going to go in the stew later on with the cabbage. Um, I like to have big chunks of onion in there just to bite into it for the crunch, the texture and of course for a pop of color. If you don't overcook this, you're still going to see the color of the onion in there and that is just beautiful to me. So onion is done being sliced. I have here some chilies from my garden. These are sweet chilies or banana chilies. They are not super spicy. It has a little bit of, you know, heat to it, but very, very mild. So that's why I can put this much of it in the stew, even though I'm going to start the stew with some uh, powdered pepper as well. So of course you can add some bell peppers if you want, or just t totally omit these peppers. But I thought it was just going to add a little bit of color and texture. And of course, the fragrance of it is going to make a difference in my stew. So I'm just chopping it. I'm not making it any skinny because like I said, it's not hot. So I'm not afraid to bite into it. Not even for my kids. This is just very, very fragrant. So that is set on the side. I have my cabbage washed already. And that I'm just going to cut. So I cut it into half first and then I'm just going to cut it into slices like I'm doing right now and I like to just do that so when you cut through it's coming out as little cubes and that way I don't have to finish it and try to cut it into little pieces again once you slice it so once this is cut up it's all done this is the perfect size for my cabbage this is how I like it cut it up any way you like and I'm going to do the same thing to the other half So the whole time I was chopping up my ingredients, the beef got an extra 15 to 20 minutes to cook more. And at this point, I think it is done. It has almost no juice left. It has cooked all the way down. I mean, the liquid has cooked all the way down now. And I really wanted a little bit of stock. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to just to, you know, rinse off the beef a little bit. So I have got little stock to go in the stew later. So I added the water now and as you can see it has you know rinsed it off a little so I have enough to put in the stew and now I'm going to start frying my meat. So I have a pot on fire I'm adding some oil in here and I'll let it warm up a little bit and then we'll fry our beef. So the oil is hot now I am adding in our beef yes so into the hot oil it goes I'm going to fry it not to be very very uh, well fried just a little bit of you know cooking extra cooking in the oil to make it golden and then I'll bring it out of the oil and we'll start making the actual stew so all that uh, extra pieces of the stock or the marinade coming into the oil is of course going to guarantee us an extra depth of flavor so yes this stew is going to be amazing very simple quick students this is the perfect recipe for you so i hope you are able to try it so whilst we are frying the meat i'm not wasting any time i'm going to be washing my rice so i'll be toasting the rice first and that is why i'm using the strainer to make sure i get every moisture out of it and I've set that aside. It's been about five minutes. Our beef is fried to golden. Like I said, it's not very um, crunchy or I didn't fry it to be very hard as we would normally describe it in Ghana. This is still very soft. Remember, my kids are going to be eating this as well. And my husband actually doesn't really like hard fried beef. Even though I like it, I want to be chewing on it. But hey. 
growing up sucks okay i have other people i have to consider so anyway our beef it's all done yes and i'm going to set it on the side i have my onions here so that is the half of an onion that i and then that little extra one that i cut up and i added a little bit of the large one when i finished cutting it anyway so i would say this is still about a half of a uh, large onion so the small portion of onions that i left is what i'll be using to cook the rice with and all these little pieces of fried meat in here the aroma and the taste is going to bring to the stew you just have to try to believe it so I've added my sliced garlic in here now and I'm just going to let these cook until it is a little bit sweaty and then I'll add my tomatoes. So like I said, this is a no blender recipe and I'm going to be using some diced tomatoes. So I have two cans of diced tomatoes and I'm also going to use a little bit of tomato paste. So we'll open these and then we'll put them in the stew. Before we put the tomatoes, I'm going to add some smoked paprika in here uh this is about a half of a teaspoon remember i'm going to be adding my sweet peppers and those have a little bit of heat but not too much heat so this is just enough plus my kids i want them to be able to eat this so it has to be just a little bit of pepper and i'm now adding in here my tomatoes these are diced tomatoes so it's almost like stewed tomatoes it is very soft almost cooked already so this is going to ensure that our stew is not going to be cooking for too long I'm adding like a huge tablespoon of the tomato paste in here and that is pretty much all that I'm going to add give it a stir and make sure that it is well dissolved or melted into the stew and then I'll let this cook so now that our stew is well underway let's focus on our rice now so I'm going to pour about two tablespoons of avocado oil in my pot and I'm adding to it now that it's hot my onions and garlic this is just a little bit about a quarter of a large onion and a few uh, slices of garlic I'm just going to let this cook until it is sweaty not all the way caramelized and then I'll add the rest of my ingredients to this so I have some turmeric here I'm going to add about a teaspoon of that in here that is what is really going to give you that bright yellow color to your rice but I'm also going to add a little bit of curry powder because I love the flavor that curry brings so curry powder already has some turmeric in it anyway but on its own it's not as bright so I like the extra turmeric to make it real yellow rice uh-huh so that is also a teaspoon in here so a teaspoon of each I'm going to stir this until it is you know smelling good but you this is like what half half a minute like 30 minutes 30 seconds you don't want to do it too long because it is just cooking in oil and when it overcooks it's going to burn and you won't have that beautiful yellow color so I just let it cook for the 30 seconds I've added my rice in here now and I'm going to toast it so I'm just tearing for every part of the rice every grain to be covered with something yellow you know <laughs> and then we'll proceed so it's looking like I've achieved what I'm trying to achieve just beautiful light toasting your rice allows it to absorb the spice you know the curry and the turmeric that you have in there it also helps to make the grains beautiful when it is finally cooked so I've covered it it is on the lowest setting and I'm just going to let it be that way for about two minutes come and stir it and then we'll proceed with cooking so whilst that is going on I'm checking on my stew we don't want it to burn I'm just stirring it making sure that it is doing all right so I also think it's a good time for me to add my seasoning cube I'm going to be using one Maggi cube it's a shrimp tablet in here and feel free to use any stock cube or beyond cube of choice and of course it's so hard like rock hard so I just dropped it in there once the moisture gets into it it's going to be soft enough and I'm just going to squish it 
so it melts or dissolves and then I'll stir it up into the stew so our rice at this point is beautifully toasted and now I'm adding a can of coconut milk and everything that I'm using I'm going to list the right quantities for you in the description box of course so using the same can that the coconut milk came out of I filled twice with water and I poured it into my rice so it's like three of that container of liquid you know one is one part milk and two parts water in here I'm going to stir that add some salt and our rice is ready to cook so I'm adding about a teaspoon of salt and just a little bit extra and this is always going to be according to your taste this smells so good already I love coconut anything coconut count me in so this is already killing me killing me killing me <laughs> so I've covered that I'm going to let it cook and on this point as you can see our stew has really reduced it has cooked down there's not much moisture in here and I think it's the perfect time for me to add in my beef so I've poured them in here now giving it a stir so it gets a chance to soak up some of the stew and also give extra beefy flavor into the stew you know hmm. this is gonna be so good my mom used to make amazing amazing cabbage stew beef cabbage or sometimes with beef liver oh that one is so so good so if you have some beef liver or oh, Ghana you know just get yourself some liver and just replace that with the beef with that and it's gonna be so good so anyway I am adding my little stock that I had to make sure I had you know I added the water to gain this because it means a lot to me and the beef as you see I trimmed off all the fat so the stock is pretty lean there's almost no fat in here very thick and it's going to bring extra flavor like really just mix it up it's there and there we go so our beef has been in here on the very lowest heat for about three minutes that is all it's been for and I'm going to add in here my sliced peppers just so it gets a chance to cook you know give off the aroma that it has in here I didn't even bother removing the seeds because really it's not spicy so I'm just going to let this cook for about three more minutes and then I'll add my onions in here as well. So it's been three minutes and I think it's a good time for me to add my onions. If you can see the peppers have softened up just enough now. And so here are my sliced red onions and then I'll add my cabbage as well. That is going to be a lot. So I'm just going to try to add it in batches. So this is about a third of the cabbage in here. Now I'm going to give it a stir just so the stew will help because the moisture in the stew plus of course the fact that it is hot is going to help wilt the cabbage like partially wilt it right away. So it's going to reduce as you can see it's come down in the pot and now I can add more cabbage. And yes everything can fit in here now so there we go and I'm just going to mix this up and at this point you can start setting the table because dinner is about to be served mm -hmm. something good is about to be on the table <laughs> this is so good like seriously very simple but you know perfect textures the crunch of the cabbage those little pieces of beef in here perfectly laced into it the little slices of onions and peppers ah this is just like a match made in heaven <laughs> in a foodie's heaven i should say this is good so i've covered it and that way it's going to trap some moisture in here to help cook the cabbage through and whilst this is going on i check on my rice it is almost done but not all the way yet because every grain that you pick has a little bit of hardness in the core so I just need a little bit more time about five more minutes and this should be done and that is about how much longer we need on our cabbage stew anyway so perfect timing for sure 
So checking on it now, I have tasted for salt. It needs just a little bit more salt. So that is what I've just added in here. I'm going to stir this and then I'll cover it right back up so it gets the chance to cook through. If you like a lot of crunch in your stew, at this point I would say it is done because like I always say, this is going to go in the fridge every time you take some and you warm it. It's going to cook a little extra and it's going to be softer anyway. So anyway, I covered it for about three more minutes and just look at that. That did the magic. It is cooked to perfection. And I'm just adding here some basil for fragrance and of course a pop of color in here. You need a little bit of green in there, you know, and stir it. And at this point, I'm just going to turn off the flame because basil is just going to wilt in here. Once we get everything ready, it's still going to be infusing in our stew. So it's all done. And so is our rice. Just look at that. Just look at that beautiful pop of yellow. Not just beautiful, but of course it is big on flavor as well. And of course, aroma or fragrance, whichever way you want to call it. Just look. Yes, this was so much well enjoyed and I hope you are able to try this. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video and tell your friends and family about the channel. Let them all come and join us. Let us grow together. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Kwan Chua. Making simple, replicable family meals is my passion and I hope that this convinces you to join this family. Thanks for watching once again and until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving. Be kind, be happy.